I I brought up the the clubhouse thing actually, and Elon, um, because I just wanted to uh, get your thoughts about something he's said a few times to me to me and in, in, in general is that he's under a huge amount of stress, and I'm thinking of st doing a startup now and kind of thinking about all of this because uh, I you know I enjoy podcasts I enjoy science. But he says that his life is basically hell. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. very difficult. That he looks happy, but he's probably very good at math. He's fulfilled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's fulfilled. But the stress levels, the constant fires that he has to put out. And he says that most people wouldn't want to be me. And that basically the reason he does what he does is because there's probably something wrong with him. Like it's not a, he can't help it, but do that. It's kind of beautiful in a kind of Russian <laughs> masochistic way. <laughs> well, I, I just wonder the stress. I mean, I'm sure you can, you can imagine the mm -hmm. kind of stress he's under because so it's, it's running three plus companies oh. and there's constant, like he, he says that, you know, every single meeting is a, is not about like, should we install a coffee maker in the in the in the kitchen? It's like, uh, you know, this rocket is going to blow up, and I don't. We're all fucked. I don't know what to do, and we have to. You have to fix. You have to real fix a, real big like problem. big problems that are, and like how do you, uh, uh, yeah, how do you deal with that? What do you think about that kind of life? One one is there a way to go, you know walk through that fire, and two, should you should you walk through that fire? Well, I mean, without knowing, I've never met Elon, but certainly we have common friends in you and in um, other people that uh, he worked with long ago in the PayPal days, um, all of whom speak very highly of him and show, uh, express immense admiration for the number of things that he can maintain. I think it's fair to say that he accomplishes more before 9 a.m. than most people do in in, a decade, it's clear, and that what he does would dissolve most people into a puddle of tears, mostly because of this whole thing uh, about the brain working hard equates to thinking about duration, path, and outcome, and anticipating outcomes given A, B, C, or D, a lot of very scripted linear thinking and prediction. And that is hard, it's stressful, it requires intense neurochemical output, and he's doing that for multiple projects. So. Presumably he's buffered himself from the coffee maker issues and the little tiny issues, but he is it himself, unless there's something I don't know, he's walking around in a biological system. He mm. is, yes. he, <laughs> that's- uh, Allegedly, yes. Yeah, allegedly. So, um, and I don't wanna reveal too much here, but I have a, a, a common um, a coworker and colleague through some contract work I do that uh, what I can tell you is that he's accessing the best resources in terms of how to optimize his biology. Mm -hmm. And he's thinking about that, not just for himself, but for all of Neuralink. Because I think, I'm not trying to dodge the question, but I think there's the there's the scale of the individual, but then there's the companies that he's creating. And you've got people there that you could imagine if they're working at 10% better capacity or can focus 5% better for 20% of the day, you're looking at an enormous increase in productivity and a, and a reduction in the time to reach goals, which will reduce the amount of stress presumably on Elon, unless he goes and starts another endeavor, right? So I think it's certainly not healthy for most people. It seems to be where he gets his dopamine hits. I'm also really struck by the fact that he has a family and he has, you know, yeah. he maintain, he's got kids growing up and a relationship and all that. So it's super impressive. I think that, um, I don't know, how old is Elon? He's 40, I mean, pushing 50, I think 48. So even more impressive. 49. Right? Because, it, you know, many people who've been at exceedingly high output for a decade or more don't do well. Their system breaks down. Yes. Well, this is what he was saying. He uh, actually, the, uh, I mean, I don't listen to all, all of his interviews, but on that live on the clubhouse, he mentioned that, he was kind of worried. It's interesting. He, he was worried that like sometimes, he, what I think he said is, I'm worried that some 
at some point my brain is just going to fail because of the amount of load it's under. Like how much I have to think through throughout the day. Like how many like problems you have to think through. Like, you know, it's like puzzles. It's yeah. constant puzzle solving. I would be concerned about taking somebody who's in that regime and suddenly putting them into a regime where they don't have enough to bite down into. It's like my bulldog Costello, he's happiest when chewing and tugging yeah. with that big old neck of his. And he is just not gonna become a retriever. He's not gonna, that he does well and gets his dopamine hits from chewing and pulling. Yeah. And it it seems like Elon has ended up where he is by way of his natural leanings. I Unless there's a, a backstory that's, um, trauma-based or something, and I don't even begin to think that there is, it seems that he has, he's one of those rare individuals in history that has an immense drive to create in all these different domains. I'm just saying the obvious here, yeah. but it seems like that's what makes him tick. I mean, you're doing an awful lot too. Well, you're, but you the know. problem is not really, uh, the, the the problem is I'm about, I've been on the verge of pulling the trigger on, on on uh, starting a company which will increase the workload significantly. And uh, I'm attracted to that because of a dream I have, but it, it's a little bit scary because it can destroy you in, in, a, in a lot of ways. There's two, there's two sources of destruction. So one source is uh, I've, for the first time in my life, a few, um, months ago, I think, have gotten, this feels like such a noob thing to say, but I've gotten some hate on the internet. No. <laughs> I know, right? No. But like, <laughs> I am such an idiot. I'm so naive to, it was, it, I, I had the question that I guess a lot of people uh, have when they get hate on the internet. It's like, like, it's like, mom, why are these people making up stuff about me? You know, that kind of feeling of like, why, why are you saying that? And and the 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 reason I mention that is like well if you go if you want to go and start a business and do as I think people should when they start a big ambitious business really try to go big like what does success look like in terms of your emotional journey you're going to have a lot of people who make up stuff about you who say negative things, I mean, majority, hopefully, if you do a good job, will be supportive and, but there's still going to be this army of people there. And like that, that was scary to me because of how much emotional impact that had on me. Well, and I also know a little bit, I have some glimpse into the fact that you put your heart and soul into everything you do. Right. You're not a, you're lighthearted about certain things, but you're even lighthearted about being full gas pedal 24 yeah. seven, there's kind of this, you know, uh, was it, um, was it Laird Hamilton always says, you know, the big wave surfer, he's, uh, he always says, you know, um, bright light, dark shadow, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I think it's that intensity. And when you do that, and then suddenly people are starting to like throw some paint on your picture, you're like, wait, hold, you know, you're yeah. going max capacity. Yeah. But I think the company is an interesting one because you've talked about doing this company before. I've been afraid. I've just not been pulling the trigger uh, it, out of fear because I enjoy this life. This is, this, I'm starting to interrupt, but it, it's ultimately this l question of taking a leap. Is like, uh, say you're in academia, like you're at MIT. You're, I really love doing research at MIT. I really love that life. Why take a leap out? You know, but I did because uh, it's been a dream. But now, accidentally along the way, I found this podcasting thing, which is also really fulfilling. And, you know, it's like, why take a leap? Because you have a huge lust for life. Yeah. I mean, that's the, you. I mean, sometimes when I'm on the internet and I think, is this, you know, you hear about it like, oh, it's addicting, you know, YouTube's addicting, all that. Actually, sometimes I think maybe that's true, but a lot of times I just think there's so much here. There's a lot of garbage but there's so many gems out there in the world now. It's almost like, sure, how you allocate time is key, but I I think you can do it all. Not, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm maybe really... not five more things, yeah, but, yes. but all. Yes, exactly. and, and one thing I just had this idea, and this is not grounded in any scientific paper, but I think the answer might come to you during this, um, 
this torture that you're about to put yourself <laughs> through with David. Because so. in those mental states, you're really asking the question, right? You're asking the question, where is my capacity? And am I even close to my capacity? And if I am, what's what's of the most value? I think we find the answers to those things in those nonverbal, non-analytic states. It just comes to us. I hope you're right. And I hope it's a profoundly fulfilling experience as opposed to one that leads to my demise. But- You have uh, a will, right? <laughs> <laughs> it goes, uh, it all goes to the, to the hedgehog. Yeah, exactly, to the hedgehog. <laughs> Uh, now it all makes sense. Andrew, uh, like we talked about offline and on this podcast, I do hope we write some stuff together, do some research together. You're, oh, uh, you're, you're one of the most inspiring scientists you know, this, speaking of communicating to the world. Uh, so I can't wait to see what you do with the podcast. I'm already a huge fan. I've been telling everybody about it. Uh, I can't wait to see you talk to Joe. Uh, as well soon. And I can't wait to see what kind of paper we write together. Thanks so much for talking today. No, thank you. That project's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. And thanks again for having me on. Appreciate you, brother.